some of the numbers from last night. But I wanted to give a quick update for anybody that's been following along. Uh, this is what it looked like when I went to bed last night. Okay, so when I went to bed last night, this is pretty much the situation everyone agreed on. Pennsylvania, Trump was winning by 144,000 votes, needed a huge surge in votes for uh, Biden to really, um, you know, kind of bring that one through. In terms of Nevada, Nevada was a very, very, very tight race last night before I went to bed. Very close margin, 0.65%. Remember that, because Nevada is key to Joe Biden simply just winning right now. Um, Arizona, Fox News called this one early. However, a lot of people, including protesters at some places, have been like, oh, Trump. Uh, Arizona, though, they just legalized marijuana. So I have a feeling this whole legalizing marijuana in Arizona thing, like that's kind of part of this, like, where are all the blue people? It's like, well, apparently they're smoking pot. Maybe. We'll see. I have to check out how many people voted for it. But in this state, um, Arizona, either, I mean, you want to see Joe Biden gaining lead or maintaining. So we'll see what the update looks like. Uh, okay, again, that's just last night. And then Georgia. Georgia was looking like there's a lot of votes. There could be some kind of change. We'll see what happens. And again, this is last night. North Carolina, Trump winning by 80,000 votes. So with all of this in mind, okay, with all of this in mind, who we thought was going to win last night, now let's flash forward to this morning. So now, <clears throat> I went through, popped in this morning's numbers from the respective states, um, the estimated percent of remaining votes I also popped into there. And then you can see I did estimates for, of course, the total number of votes and then the remaining votes or sorry, the, uh, the total votes that there will be. This is how many votes percentage they've had. So I'm just doing a cross product. Okay, if you want to see cross products, all I'm doing is just a simple cross product to figure out this orange value. Orange value being how many votes I think there'll be in the election. Every now and then can check with the, uh, the elections board for the state and see how many people are registered to vote and then kind of use that to make sure your number didn't get too crazy and for the most part I have seen zero problems with these numbers so long story short look what happened in Pennsylvania Pennsylvania Trump's lead shrunk by 44,000 votes so that's pretty incredible but I haven't put in the new favor numbers to see how the rest of this will work out so I'll pop those in, in just a second um, in Nevada Look at this. Nevada went from Biden leading by 8.8, .8, or sorry, just let's say 8,000, or uh, six points as they call it in the game. Biden leading by six points. Now, as of today, with the newest ballot drops, he's leading by nine points, 13,000 votes. Incredible to see that change. Arizona has seen zero change since last night, so we don't know anything new in Arizona, unfortunately. Uh, I did a double check on the votes, no change. Uh, Georgia, this has been incredible to see this turnaround right here. In Georgia, look at, um, uh, yeah, okay. So Biden in Georgia gained 21,000 votes, uh, like maybe like 15,000. Oops. So that's pretty incredible if you think about that. Because a lot of people were calling Georgia early on. So the fact that um, right now, Georgia, the separation's 14,000. What's up, Wacky? Good morning to you. The fact that right now the separation's 14,000 in Georgia, whereas uh, last night it was 24,000. I mean, look at that. Five point separation to only three point separation. We could say four to three. That's pretty decent. So George is interesting, but again, I gotta pop in these numbers right here. But apparently, maybe like a hundred thousand votes remain. Um, so it depends on who they favor. But it looks like this favorage has flipped in Georgia. So technically, it's favoring um, Biden a little bit more than it's favoring Trump. So I think at the moment, it's not a horrible idea to adjust this and to predict slightly more votes going to Biden overall as the um, 100,000 continue. 
Nevada. Yeah, all it takes is Nevada, and it's done. And right now, look at that, 13,000 vote lead. His lead increased in Nevada. And now the Trump um, campaign has just released something saying that they're alleging out-of-state voter fraud in Nevada. So, whatever that means. Uh, North Carolina. Look at the change in North Carolina, actually. Uh, let's go here. Uh, North Carolina, no change. So all I've seen changes in are Georgia, Pennsylvania, and Nevada. I haven't even looked at the uh, the other states just yet. But it looks like it's it's pretty much, pretty much, uh, yeah. Like Georgia is very close. You know, it's down to a hundred thousand votes. With okay, so if we go to um, yesterday at two thirty p.m. You can see in Georgia, Trump was leading by about 60,000. So now we flash forward to this morning. Trump is only leading by 15,000 in Georgia. And again, this was at about 2.30 p.m. yesterday that I first started doing this chart, first stream I had last night for that. So think about that. I mean, that's, that's a huge change overall. Pennsylvania, if you look at Pennsylvania, Trump was winning by 344,000 votes yesterday at 2.30 p.m. So, did they call it already wacky on Pennsylvania? Because what I've seen for Pennsylvania is that 85% of the vote counted yesterday at 2.30 p.m. Trump was winning by 344,000 votes. Now this morning in Pennsylvania, with 92% of the vote counted, uh, he's only leading by 100,000. So, I see what you're saying. That one is definitely a long shot. Because if you say North Carolina goes to Trump at 1.4, then you should probably say Pennsylvania goes to Trump at 1.4, right? Like, the spread in terms of the vote difference is about the same right now. Whereas on these, I feel like you can almost call these races. So you can say Nevada and Arizona goes to Biden for the victory. But, I don't know, there's going to be a lot of contention here, especially. Because Biden right now, he's got four paths to the White House. Um, where, like, as long as he gets Arizona, as long as Biden gets Arizona, then he has four options for the White House. Pennsylvania, Nevada, Georgia, and North Carolina. If, um, if Trump gets Arizona, then these all become, like, total long shots for the victory. Um, so I think the assumption that Arizona is going to be going to, um, Biden. I think most people are not contesting that now just because of the vote spread. But that's what we're waiting for, which is why I got up early this morning, is there should be something coming in from Arizona. So they said officials in Maricopa County, which includes Phoenix, said they would release another results update after 9 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> which means midnight, Thursday night. And so we're not going to know a lot about Arizona until midnight, unfortunately. I think it was Nevada that I was waiting. Yeah, I think it was Nevada. I don't know. I'm losing track of things. Yeah, look at that. Nevada is going to update their results Thursday at noon Eastern. So that's 9 a.m. for me. And so that's why... Let me double check on Nevada here. Oh, yeah, I think they did update their results. Look at that. Yeah, Nevada updated the results. Fuck yeah! Let's get these results updated here. I didn't even notice that at first. 603-807. And then 592. 592. 020. And then they're saying 88% of the votes have been counted. Alright, let's see where we're sitting here. So, last night before I went to bed... 65 or 0.656 percent um yeah that's quite the difference wow it's like the difference in georgia too i huh look at that these numbers are radically different I, th I must have erased it or done something wonky because I swear I already talked about this number. <laughs> hey, how's that going, Kahuna? How you doing? 
Good morning. Yeah, what I like about this year is like for like you said for Hillary Clinton, like the whole year, like the whole time it just seemed like a loss. Nobody really wants to watch a stomp unless it's the home team. Whereas like a nice even race, it's so much more interesting. Plus I'm learning. So 163,000 votes remain in Nevada. My my question though is with all the votes that have been counted and the percent that have been returned and then how many votes we think the states will have total. I'm still very curious to see like, um, so Pennsylvania, if I go back to yesterday at 2.30 p.m., here is who I thought was gonna win, okay? To answer your question. Pennsylvania, okay, this is yesterday at 2.30 p.m. Seattle time. With only 85% of the vote, I thought Trump was gonna take Pennsylvania. Uh, I said Biden with 8,000 votes was gonna win Nevada. I said Arizona was going to Biden. Um, I said Georgia was probably going to Trump. But, you know, who knows? It's a lot of votes to count. And for North Carolina, I was predicting that uh, Biden... Uh, I think I was predicting that Biden might have a fighting chance because I was fiddling with some numbers. So that was yesterday at 2.30 p.m. Okay. Now keep in mind, if you look at Pennsylvania, they had a million votes left to count yesterday. So let's flash forward today and not go through every single sheet with my breakdown and analysis. Here's where we're sitting at this morning, right? Half a million votes left in Pennsylvania and then half a million votes approximately in Arizona. So I want to know if people are calling Pennsylvania, right? Why are they not calling Arizona if this many votes remain in both states? You know what I'm saying? So there seems to be this bias, like a major bias, in terms of, okay, we're calling Pennsylvania for Trump, but we're not calling Arizona. So I think it's that maybe that 1% difference that'll make it or break it for, um, uh, make it or break it. So I think if Trump can narrow the margin to within something like Pennsylvania, or sorry, if Biden can narrow the margin to something within like uh, Pennsylvania, then maybe we'll see a change. So from last night, if we look at uh, Nevada, we see that Biden was leading after all these numbers and breakdowns by about 8,000 votes. Now, with the new vote dump from Nevada, as of like, what, 15, 30 minutes ago, he's leading by 12,000. Now all of a sudden you have um, news reports saying that the Republicans are trying to sue Nevada yeah, but it's like, it's an even fight. It's great. It's not just a knockout punch. I think whether you support Trump or whether you support Biden, I think both sides thought it was going to be a blow up by the other side, right? And so this is, um, this is quite the result. I haven't even looked at how many people have voted yet, though. <laughs> Arizona. Uh, so who do I think is going to win? Well, uh, let me answer your question. I think it's more likely Biden's going to win than it, than it is that Trump's going to win. Let me put it that way. So I think Trump has a battle, whereas I think Biden will just be on defense, which is interesting because usually the Democrats are on offense. And so I think the Republicans being on offense will give us a really interesting window into the mind of like, how that works out because I don't think I, I don't think I really remember them so much being on the defense as um, when like Bush was on president that's when they were just always kind of like defending the White House um, let's go here yeah so I'll just look at their chart real quick because it's faster they were already talking about the one electoral vote that Biden got in um, in Nebraska but CNN's not adding that one single electoral vote from Omaha, Nebraska to Biden for some reason. So this is why it's hard for you to answer your question. Um, you hate Trump in the UK. Understood. Understood. You know, that's I always thought like Boris Johnson was the foil for Trump, but I think it's just because they had the same haircut. So I was exhibiting this this very stupid bias that I tried to check immediately. But the fact that UK is going back into lockdown. Mm, Boris Johnson is so smart for that. I think it would have been stupid if they didn't do it. Like, it's so much better to, like, get it done if your government can take care of the people. 
compared to like not locking down and getting all worried. So who I think is going to win, because like right now I say it's 254 to 217, and I say when Nevada is taken by Biden, he wins the presidency. Okay, right now at this point, since he has this one extra vote right here, maybe let's do it like this. Oh, uh, interactive. This is my favorite way to do it, is just to do it myself. When Trump visited, we protested, and we protested hardcore. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, it was never going to be a blue uh, Texas. That's fine, but there was progress made, I guess. So, let's flip everything to the way it is right now, right? Oh, wait. Uh, and I'll show you who I think is going to win, and then we'll look for a couple updates, and then we'll go from there. Uh, I got the one vote. Got the, See, these ones, these votes right here for Maine... And these votes for New England, these are super important votes to make sure you uh, get counted. So let's say, uh, what am I forgetting? Oh yeah, he won Vermont. Okay, I think I'm still missing one vote. Yes, here we go. So this is the one vote that we get from Omaha, Nebraska. And then this is the one vote that Republicans get from... Maine, which could still go to um, Biden. But right now, this is what I see, and this is what my chart is essentially looking at. 264 to 217. Yeah. And again, if you look at CNN's just like basic prediction website, like this is me doing it by myself, they're still not counting Omaha, Nebraska. I'm sure whatever, but... Uh, the, if you know the Twitch streamer, the real Shook One, the real Shook One is, I'm pretty sure he's from like Omaha, Nebraska, but I noticed and I messaged him, I was like, hey man, your hometown gave that single vote, and like on his uh, on his Twitch stream, ones are very important, he likes people to like throw up ones from Mod City, ones, I don't know, so I think it's funny they got uh, just a single electoral vote. So, um... This is really, I think, this is why people were pissed at Fox News, and this is why people are freaking out, including the Republicans in Nevada, is because Biden only has to win Nevada, or he has to win Pennsylvania, or he has to win North Carolina, or he has to win Georgia. So this is why I think it's a much, much, much different election year compared to what we normally see. In fact, I look so pale, I should put my light on here, is that Biden has four ways to win. Okay, and this is why if you're in the Europe and you're in, and you're trying to like not freak out because you don't know what's going on, this is how I went to bed last night. This is how I went to bed election night. Is that I just quickly made a map with the most likely things from like the most logical streamers and news sources, and I just said, all right, here we go, and this is it right here. So Biden has four ways to win, but the only way Trump can win is if Trump wins all of them, right? So let's let's see what happens when Trump wins all of them. So Trump needs to win all four to take the presidency, okay? If Trump does not take all four, let's say Biden takes Nevada, then you can see Biden wins the presidency. So a very close, slim, biblical, exciting, just like nice little matchup of like everything just came down to like numerical precision, getting everything as close and precise as possible. Look at that though. But then let's say like, uh, okay, Georgia, the margins have been crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like Georgia, the margins have been crazy. Biden still wins because he takes Georgia and Nevada. Let's say he loses Nevada. He still wins if he loses Nevada and he takes Georgia. So it's like, I think that's all you need to understand from, say, like an outsider's perspective, is that on the most simplest of boards, this is what we think that we see. Um, you know, if there's votes contested in Arizona, if there's votes contested in Michigan or Wisconsin, like, yeah, obviously this could change to something else, but these two states have already called it, so I don't think there's going to be any kind of... Um, battleground situation there so they're going to stay blue so worst case scenario this is what we're looking at 
if Trump takes Arizona, that makes things very difficult. Then that means it's like a two versus two knockout. Okay. But we don't think Trump's going to take Arizona right now because of that lead we've been seeing. Right. So if I go back to my handy dandy chart, of course, just updated this morning at 915, which we'll look for additional numbers. Um, we see Pennsylvania still projected for Trump. Democrats still projected to take Nevada after gaining about 4,000 votes overnight with the latest disclosure. So this is like the newest, most up-to-date vote total we have. Arizona, no change, but there should be an update coming at some point. But look at this. No change in Arizona from last night. Georgia, big gains. Big, 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 big gains in Georgia. And North Carolina. Oh, shit. I was uh, too big. I see. Um, well, again, Wacky, remember, Biden doesn't need one unless you give him the Omaha-Nebraska vote that everyone already says that he won. So if we go to live election results over here and we go to Nebraska, you can see that the New York Times already gave, see the EV right there in the middle? It says EV. Joe Biden already gave it. Hey, cool cat Jake, what's up? I see you are following me now. Excellent decision. Love it. Hey, how's it going there? Mm, Haas. I like any, uh, Doritos. Let's see here. Doritin Haas. Doritin Haas. Cool. What's up? Yeah. So, again, most people are showing it as 253 to 214, right? But you have to remember that one electoral vote in Nebraska, Omaha, Nebraska, came through in a big way, and they threw. Hey, what's up? You're Brazilian. How is the election going? The election is very, very close, and it's very calm from my perspective, I suppose. Um, I haven't seen Hassan this morning just yet, but a lot of the predictions on this chart we've been making have been flowing in line with like what Hassan seems to not be freaking out about, which is really interesting. I think all I'm sticking at, unless you're talking about something different for now, all I'm sticking at is this right here. Like, this is why I'm not so worried. This is why I'm kind of, like, calm about what, what could happen. Um, so this website right here is newyorktimes.com. So you want to go to the newyorktimes.com and then click on this little thing up here. You can do this, but click on this to make it full screen in between the 253 and the 214. And it'll bring up this big, big sheet for you. And as you can see, they're showing the total as 253 to 214. Okay. So they're not putting in the electoral votes from the states where the electoral votes are split. And that's the state of Nebraska and the state of Maine. So in Nebraska, one electoral vote goes to Biden and four electoral votes go to um, Donald Trump. And then in Maine, right now, with 87% of the vote in, I could double check on it, um, 80, uh, three electoral votes go to Joe Biden and one goes to Donald Trump. So now go to CNN's website, okay? So I'm just going to CNN.com. So this is CNN.com, and now I want you to click on, like, the map. Oh, wait, don't click on the map, actually. I want you to click on the thing that says uh, interactive. Build an electoral map. Once you click on this build an electoral map, now you've got everything you need, okay? I'll, I'll do it real quick. So this is what it brings up. It shows you what the um, pre-election night predictions were. What they thought everything was going to be and like the flips and you know where things could go wrong. And as you can see, Biden had a pretty early lead. California obviously helps with 55 electoral votes. Now, if you go through and you click on them, you can change them. And it changes the uh, diagram up here. So as you get results, as you get hunches, um, as you see certain states declare victory, you can change it to uh, what's actually going on in the election. So this is a huge help that these people have built all these websites. And so right now, that's essentially what we're looking at is 
putting it to be what it looks like right now, where people are arguing. Whoops, that's blue. Um, and then the one other thing to remember, assuming Arizona stays blue, okay, I'll get rid of this one at the moment, is in Nebraska and in Maine, they're shown down here. Like this is the Nebraska Electoral College votes, and you can see how they look on the map, and then this is the Maine Electoral College votes up here. Both candidates are trying to get to 270 votes. Okay, so every time they take a state, they get points. Right now, the way uh, I see the prediction is that in Maine, they're saying one electoral vote goes to Donald Trump. So he's at 217. So you can see it's adjusted up here. And over in Nebraska, Omaha, Nebraska is apparently very um, liberal or democratic. And so we're now changing that to be a democratic. And that gives Joe Biden 264. Okay, so this is something you're not seeing on most of the other websites. They know it's there, but they're not calling it. Physicals, both sides, especially the Republicans, would not want to put that up there. Let's actually double check Fox News. Electoral College Dropout sounds like a good indie band name. <laughs> yeah. Mm, maybe album title, but I see what you're saying. Yeah, just a single, a quick song. I like it. Um, let's see here. Yeah, see, look at this. Even Fox News. Look at Fox News. Fox News says it's down to four. That is exactly what I'm predicting. It's down to four states, meaning Biden has four ways to win, and Trump has one way to win. Now, if the Republicans know they only have one way to win, of course, that's when crazy town happens. Uh, but for now, let's pretend like it's not going to be crazy town because of the, the Lincoln Project. Okay, breaking news. Top Georgia election official expects vote counting to end this afternoon. So we're going to know Georgia this afternoon. That's perfect. It's maybe like 3 p.m., 6 p.m. So we've got still a bit of a wait ahead of us to see what's going on, but for the most part, uh, that's exciting. All right, let's see what they're calling for. Okay, so look at this. They're saying 264 for Biden, but only 214 for Trump. Now, how do you get those numbers, Fox News, right? Yeah, the election by mail, um, it's a pretty strange thing. But like in my state of Washington, which is uh, where I'm at, you can see Biden won 76 to 21. I'm in, I'm in King County, Seattle. <laughs> I mean, so essentially what happened is like when the polls closed in Seattle, essentially they posted numbers and it was like the entire West Coast just was like blue as soon as the polls closed on the West Coast. So it was like amazing because... We received our ballots on, I want to say, I remember it being August 15th or 16th, and that's exactly what they were telling us in the news, is that in Seattle, King County, that we would get our ballots to vote in the election uh, sometime around the middle of October. And most people on the internet were saying 15th or 16th, and sure enough, showed it up in my mailbox on the, I believe it was 16th. So I voted back on, like, I think the day I got my ballot, I set it aside, I did what I was doing, and then the next day... I did my ballot and I walked it to the, um, the drop box. So it's been a long time. And I think a lot of people freaked out about the, the mail-in ballots, but it turns out that everybody wants the assurance of mail-in ballots. Meaning election night, we had already counted 80% of the total ballots returned. And 80% of the total ballots returned were 80% of the potential registered voters in Seattle. Uh, check this out. Here's the ballot return snapshot. So now, overall, we're at 85%. But on the moment the results dropped on election night, we were at 80%, like right when the polls closed. So the mail-in ballots was a really cool way to do it. And I think early voting in general, as long as you have proper chain of custody with early voting, and as long as you ensure there's no like tampering in the electronic voting case... I think it's a great thing because here we are all sitting here like biting our nails, biting our nails, huh? Huh? anybody? And you know, we just want results, but you see that like the most, even Florida had a lot of early voting, but you see a lot of um, states where the, um, the mail-in ballots are still coming in. Those are the states where it's like, you're getting all these Biden votes, which is great. And so if you're a Republican, you're freaking out because you're like, oh my God, mail-in votes are equivalent to democratic votes. So 
oh my gosh, you probably saw in the news that Donald Trump wanted to, um, he ordered the Postmaster General to have various postal uh, sorting stations pull out their mechanical computer mail sorting platforms that they use and like put them outside, tear them apart, cut the wires, get rid of them. And he did this, what was this, like a month or two ago? And it, you know, that didn't matter because all these states, we still found ways to count the votes because people voted early and they did it really well. So by voting early, all that did was um, voting early essentially gave the Democrats the assurance that all their votes would be counted, but it gave the Republicans the opportunity to see the numbers of voters Meaning, if you're looking, if you're thinking as a uh, as a Republican that you're going to lose the election, then you want to pay attention to how many potential people have voted in the election, and then you need to drum up your base, whether it's at church or wherever it is, to go and vote and find new Republican voters. And that might be the key here: is that I think there's always been more Democratic voters than Republican voters, um, but I think Democrats can be a little bit more depressed sometimes. And so you find them not voting as much. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being goofy here. But the fact that everybody this year is motivated to vote, I really like. Because if 72 million were motivated to vote Democratic and 68 million were motivated to vote Republican, and you compare that to previous years, like record voter turnout, he now has more votes than I think Obama ever got. Okay, so like that's how big this election has been. So mail-in ballots allowing additional people to vote and it allowing additional ballots to be counted that normally because people work or because they can't get to the polling place or because they're in a wheelchair and they live alone and they have no one to take care of them. They can't, you know, just all these random reasons where stuff just keeps flowing in. If you look at counties, my favorite way to look at this is counties, which I can't wait to see the weighted maps where you can actually see it. But this is uh, this is shaping up. Let's see what's going on in the news here. I don't think there's much more to talk about. I think we just wait to see what happens and go from there. Nevada hasn't changed, right? But yeah, if you're coming in from Europe and you're trying to figure out what's going on, you're looking for some stability, um, I would say Biden has four ways to win. Trump has one way to win. And, and so I would say right now odds are favoring Biden and some payout pools are actually paying out on Biden winning because again, he has four ways to win. Trump has one way to win. So if you're looking at this like a loan shark, like a betting pool, you're looking at these splits of four to one, one to four, and you're seeing like, you know, can Trump do all four states? That's the real question right now. That's why like Omaha. Oh, actually, you know, it's really funny. Check this out. Let's say that... Um, Let's say that um, that Biden didn't get a vote in Omaha, Nebraska. Now, watch this. This is what I was having fun with election night. Something like this. We were trying to figure out what to do. Uh, so, like, if Nebraska did not come through for um, Biden... Biden would really only have, he would have to win Nevada. Okay, so this would be super nail biter for him. He would have to win Nevada. And we'd be like, oh my gosh. But again, we have this one vote here in Nebraska. So let's say this is the situation. Now the odds would say that Biden has three ways to win. Or sorry, yeah, three ways to win. Trump only has one way to win. So it's actually pretty lucky that Nebraska went for Biden because that gave him a slight edge in this calculation right here um, to where all he has to do is win Nevada. So instead of having to win two states to win, he only has to take one of those four states, which is, uh, again, not the result I think a lot of people were expecting. I think a lot of people were expecting this. Um, I think this is what a lot of people were expecting. And that it would have been declared last night that Biden won. So if it was just a little bit more blue in Florida, a little bit more blue in Texas, would have gone to sleep and it's over. So here we are. It would be hilarious just to like demand to recount in Florida. In fact, I did the stats on Florida last night just because I wanted to take a look at it. And look at this. Oh, wait. Um, how many votes were counted? I was messing with this votes remaining thing. Uh, let's see here. 
They still say 96% of votes have been counted. So let's just go with their numbers for the hell of it. So is there really half a million votes left in Florida? Well, with the momentum Trump has, he would still win by 300,000. So it doesn't matter. So Florida, like, is called. Anyways, how could that flip? Well, I don't know. Could it? I don't think it could flip. Even if, like, all the late return ballots in Florida were 70% Biden, 30% Trump, and that's that's pretty generous, considering it should be at, like, 60-40, you would still see a victory by Trump in Florida. So that's why I think it's interesting to show this example, if you're interested, kind of like in what's been going on here. And sorry, I'm covering it again. Is that if we... S the remaining votes that are left... Okay, this is my estimated remaining votes based on how many votes have come in so far, the percentage that are remaining. Trump wins if it's 50-50 for all the remaining votes that are counted. Okay, we've already, we've already called Florida. It is what it is. But if we switch Biden to have 70% of those votes coming in, Trump still wins. So it's like, you know... There's no way that Biden can win Florida, even if the votes favor him, you know, nine to one, or sorry, uh, uh, nine to, you know what I'm saying? So it's, uh, Biden also destroyed Trump in Hawaii. Yeah, I might take a look at that. Let's see what that looks like. Did he really destroy him in Hawaii? I haven't looked too much. Oh yeah, 63%, Washington 60%. California, 65%. Oregon, 56%. Probably because of, like, this area over here. But, anyways. Um, Hawaii? Oh, yeah. Look at that. 98% of the vote in. So, the results are pretty damn certain there. There's probably not a lot of votes remaining. Um, I haven't actually looked at Hawaii. Let's compare Hawaii and Florida. I think that's a good way just to kind of look at it. Watch this. Let's go. I did Washington for fun. That was kind of pointless. Uh, okay. Isn't Hawaii HI or is it HW? It's HI. That's right. Let's go 98% in Hawaii. And then what are my numbers for Democrats? 365802. One nine six six zero oh, two. All right. Wow! Look at that lead. So, with eleven thousand votes left to count in Hawaii, he's winning by two hundred ninety-four points in Hawaii. So, like, there's no way. Yeah, uh, Biden definitely got wrecked in Alaska. 50% reporting. Yeah, they have a lot of uh, mail-in ballots because of how remote a lot of their cities can be and how like everyone has to have a four-wheel drive to survive the winter and in general the entire year. Yeah, so Hawaii, it's like, that's how certain I am that Hawaii is, I mean, obviously Hawaii is pretty certain. We could easily put this as like 60-40 and really get a better number for his lead. And if you might, if you notice, I haven't been calculating the spread beforehand. I've only been calculating the spread of votes after I calculate how many votes are left. Because I'm trying not to be too into this like, ooh, we just need four more or eight more. I'm like, I'm literally trying to look at overall. Anyways, it's closer. So that's fun for Hawaii, you know? What else could you ask for? But yeah, I think that's the way the... Uh, I think that's all we got to look at now. So the key again is getting, is understanding the split votes. And now Colorado, by the way, Colorado this year, they just voted to do the same thing that Nebraska and Maine do, but it doesn't take place until next year or like next voting election cycle. So you'll see these split electoral college votes that more and more states are trying to do. And the reason they're doing that is to try to eliminate this electoral college. Because the more you eliminate the electoral college, the more you represent the popular vote. Okay, so if a place like Omaha 
can win the popular vote and give one electoral vote to Joe Biden to get him one state from winning the presidency. Now, what would happen if Colorado did the same thing this year? They voted to do that. It's just they can't do it this year because it's this year. But you can see how overall in the state of Colorado, there's a number, there's maybe this part of Colorado or this part of Colorado where maybe Trump would wind up with one electoral vote and maybe Biden would get three. Oh, wait, no, electoral votes, nine. But let's just say you split those electoral votes. That would make a huge difference in the election right now, right? Because right now, if we split nine votes in Colorado, what would that do here? Well, theoretically, let's say like five go to Biden, so and then four go to Trump. So you subtract four from his total. Now suddenly Joe Biden only has 260. He needs to win two states. So you can see how some of the things that are on the ballots in some states are going to change things in future years. But as long as you understand that the changes are coming, you know, political parties can prepare for like the changes that will happen from all those. Why the hell does Rhode Island get four electoral votes? The electoral votes is just based on population. So look at California, 55 electoral votes. New York, it's kind of tiny, but it has 29 electoral votes. Think of their election. Um, Montana, three electoral votes, but look at their um, their population. North Dakota, look at Texas. Their population, 38 votes. That one's always kind of, you know, similar to California. Florida, same thing. Washington. We have about 3.4 million people, 12 votes. So you can do a rough estimation as to like how many electoral votes were assigned based on the relative population in the state. So Alaska, three electoral votes. It's a big ass state. Alaska, isn't Alaska like this big? If you stack it on a map. I thought Alaska's freaking huge. Alaska compared to USA. Yeah, look how big Alaska is. But there's hardly anybody living out there. You got like, you know. <laughs> this is a good little picture. Ah, oh, really? Okay, there it is. Give me. It's a great picture. Do -do 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 -do. Hmm. So, that's that. Thanks, Distinct. I appreciate you popping into the chat, but I have a feeling that you're a bot. <laughs> oh, wow. Thanks, F, whatever your name is. But I think you might be a bot. <laughs> Come back when you're not a bot. You thought, um, where's Rhode Island? Cause yeah, all these I think were kind of givens. But if we look at Rhode Island, four electoral votes, 300,000 people. Pretty big margin there, huh? So, uh, with that in mind, I think my big aha moment, the big takeaway from this election this year, is just the fact that now I understand how people are making calls. Now, there's a bit more statistics in the cooler programs that some people are using, but just as a quick trying to understand where things are going and where the momentum needs to be, I found this to be an incredibly, for my brain, insightful way to understand and keep myself calm throughout the entire process. Um, so if you're looking to really understand or convince people of your position, why you're certain of something, I think this is a good way to do it. And in the areas where we still have remaining votes, yeah, I'm still going to be paying attention um, but I'm also going to be watching how the vote count changes. So we've seen in Nevada, Biden's lead has increased. So I just assume that Biden's lead is going to continue increasing. In Arizona, Biden's like kind of held, but also increased. Um, let's see here. Biden has definitely been increasing his lead in Arizona and Nevada, which is great. Georgia. He's been increasing his lead, so, I mean, what are we waiting for? North Carolina, mm, it's been a pretty good fight since yesterday at 2.30 p.m. Trump was up by 80,000. Now he's only he's still up by 80,000. 
not much of a change. Trump is holding, so I would almost say Trump's going to hold this one. Georgia, ooh. So Biden's gaining in Georgia because I messed that up. Whoops. Oh, well, wait, what did I do? No. Okay, this is what I meant to do because this is confusing. See, this is, this is why my chart's not perfect. If it was a computer program, it would be saying the winner like Biden or Trump, but I keep switching it back and forth. Anyways, what do y'all think? Let's do a let's do a quick chat vote. Let's see here. We have Nevada, we have Pennsylvania, we have Georgia, and we have North Carolina. Which one is gonna win it? What do you think? Let's all decide. So it nails down to Biden either winning Georgia or Nevada. In terms of the ones that are the closest. Georgia is really fucking close, if I can swear for a second. And Nevada is also really close. So these two elections are definitely the ones where people are like, oh my gosh, you know, this this could be it. You just have to have slight more increase. So, so right now, Trump is winning Georgia. And right now, Biden is winning Nevada. But yeah, if he wins either of these, he's just fine. I see what you're saying. That's a good way to put it if you're like thinking about it. So then the ground truth here is, what do we get? Okay. Based on everything we see here, assuming Maine and Nebraska don't change, there's no kind of like thing going on. Biden wins Nevada. And so they challenge Biden's one vote in Nebraska. Right? Wouldn't that be a bitch? Now it's 269 to 217. So now Trump wins Pennsylvania. Trump wins North Carolina. Trump wins Georgia. And now it's 269 to 268. And now the battle is Omaha, Nebraska in their one electoral college vote. But it's kind of a landslide. So it sure seems like that would just go to uh, go to Biden. Uh, let's say Georgia flips, then we've got a pretty good look. So yeah, um, once you've got the chart with the numbers, once you've got these little places kind of showing you how much of the votes remaining, the thing you're left with is that you don't, it doesn't show you how many votes are remaining. And it doesn't make estimates as to where those votes could go. I think a lot of these places, New York Times, CNN, uh, Fox News, I don't think they want to stake their websites on saying, ooh, this is what I think the percentage is, maybe you can get in trouble or you can influence things. But for the most part, it takes just a little bit more work. Yeah, Biden is in a very, very comfortable position. He's in the position Republicans always seem to be in. The position where um, they just sit back and wait, and they wait for the challenges from the other party. So since the Democrats don't have to bring any challenges at the moment, the Republicans are the ones bringing the challenges. And that's why the Republicans apparently need the Supreme Court that's why they've been putting tons of judges in the general state courts, the circuit courts. And that's where, like, if you're an outsider and you don't know really what's going on in U.S. elections, then you find yourself in the position of judges could determine votes where there's contested elections. So <clears throat> if we can just boom and Biden wins, it's done. But there'll still be challenges from Trump on Nevada, right? So therefore, if Biden can win Georgia and Biden can win Nevada, again, he can declare victory in two ways rather than one way. And then again, when you go to court, if it goes to the Supreme Court, those kind of things get taken into account where it's like when you saw Bush v. Gore, it was that like Bush won. So if the Supreme Court sided with Al Gore, then they would be taking away a victory from Bush. Like there's some subtlety in the Bush v. Gore ruling so Biden's comfortable and Donald Trump is going to do exactly what he's going to do yeah exactly so it's cool because again Biden's been pretty cool calm and collected so if there's a Saturday Night Live take on this if it continues then you know maybe you will see um, Jim Carrey have a little bit more fun with this but like the fact that Jim Carrey doesn't have to get all like animated and comical and crazy, like that's you know that's uh, again he just 
cool, calm, and collected. And I think Jim Carrey's done a, a pretty good job so far. So, um, yeah, that's that's where we're sitting. Four ways for Biden to win, unless there's some sneaky lawyery things going on where they're going to try to take away Omaha. But again, I think it's it's all but called in Nebraska. Like, look at those vote totals. I don't think it's going to flip with 96% of the vote remaining because that's a very low population state. <clears throat> so 200,000, 250,000 votes, 96% remaining. Uh, what do the states look like that? Mm, let's see here. 200,000 votes. Don't kind of like Arizona. Let's see what would happen if we did this on Arizona. Yeah. So maybe... So maybe in Nebraska, Biden might lose like five to 10,000 if they continue voting based on what I see in that chart. So like, let's say he loses, he loses his lead by five to 10,000 votes. Doesn't matter. So uh, Nebraska is probably just fine. So I think this is an okay way to look at it. If you're looking just to get back to your homework and shit. So good times. Um, yeah, <clears throat> that's about all I got in me. It's early. I need to go grocery shopping. I need to make breakfast. But I just wanted to kind of get this out of my head because, yeah, I, I hope you're as excited as I am that um, it's a pretty calm election year and that all we got to do is wait for the votes to be counted. So if there's any last remaining questions, um, if anybody wants to see the chart, I think I'm just trying to inspire people to uh, kind of have fun with the numbers. So maybe I'll just do it like that. This would probably be easier to read on 1080p, by the way. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just the way it worked out.
Uh, I was just, uh, I was about to stop, and then all of a sudden I looked at this one and I saw the numbers come in wacky, so I was kind of like winding down a little bit. Uh, but now, I just updated numbers for Pennsylvania, so Trump's lead Trump just a little bit more, with apparently more votes remaining. I just looked at Nevada's new numbers, and you can see that Biden gained a 3,000 vote additional leads, now he's at the 15,000 votes that he's leading by. No change in Arizona. In Georgia, basically things changed by 60 votes, so Trump is only winning by a little bit more. North Carolina, same kind of thing, like, didn't see a whole lot of change. I think it was like 600 votes. Yeah, Biden closed in Georgia. A little bit closer in Georgia. And North Carolina, same kind of thing. Yeah, it sounds static. You know this microphone that I got? That causes it, if it's in just the wrong position, it'll, um, it'll wind up causing static until I find just the right position. So basically, I need to... Yeah, it is really stupid. Uh, I'm watching the... Should be fine now. Does that look good? Or is it not good? Sounds broken. Yeah, see what I'm saying? Get the microphone now, apparently. But I see it clipping and popping right now. It's really weird. I've rolled down. Should be good now, I think. Anyways, uh, that's something new. I discovered that in my online class. I guess it's never really happened until now. So, might have to start using my index or my uh, webcam. Forty dollars can get you a pretty decent mic slash arm setup. Yeah, I know it's coming. I'm gonna get through this class this quarter, and then I'll continue upgrading my streaming setup. For the most part, just finish the class. Good. <laughs> I'm on a limited budget since I'm not really working and I'm just doing class. So, try not to spend too much money. Wow. Well, uh, yeah, that's all I got so far. Uh, I'll keep watching the news. We'll keep looking for changes. And you can see... New York Times just said the exact same that I said. Trump's lead in Georgia shrank to 13,540. But of course, what they project, uh, my number is different because I also factor in the votes that haven't yet come in, meaning I've got like a, maybe a thousand extra votes. <laughs> Something like that. Hmm. With Biden slowly making gains in three key states, Trump issued a written statement in all capital letters making basis claims that there could be fraud in the late votes. Wait, I gotta see this. Oh, thank you, Wacky. I will check those out. And, okay, let's here. Professional broadcasting microphone. So, yeah. Oh, really? They're that cheap? For 25 bucks, you get a microphone and a stand? Are you kidding me? But it's XLR, right? I'm assuming it's not USB. So you need an XLR audio processor, which I don't have one right now. But that's still... I didn't realize the prices were so cheap. Oh, this one is USB, though, the $50 one. Okay, right on. I will, I will look into that. That one actually looks... I could probably squeeze that one into the old budget. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see here. Real Donald Trump. Wow, look at this. He is getting shut down by Twitter. 
you're having to like click on his posts to see what they say. Can you imagine being president of the United States of America and some little tech company is muting what you're trying to say? <laughs> is this the all caps one? No. Let's see here. What's this one? Oh, stop the fraud. <laughs> I can see why. Um, I can see why Twitter would do that. Because, like, even seeing the tweet is insightful. You're like, oh, president's saying there's fraud. It's like, doesn't really look like there's fraud. They're just counting votes, bro. Just let them keep counting the votes. It always takes a few days to deal with it, and then there you go. The reason this year is super weird is because it almost seems like an artificial intelligence has predicted this year's election. Does that make sense? We're like, it's so razor slim that the computers were just working overdrive and were just freaking out all night trying to figure out what to do. Like, ha, 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 what do we do? Where can we steal the election? But yeah, um, if Georgia and Nevada, uh, let's see here. Hmm. Delaware? Oh, really? Is Delaware a thing? Uh, 90, greater than 98% counted. Yeah, I mean, Delaware is just fine. I don't understand why. Okay. Hmm. Well, good times. Yeah, I haven't seen any election infer interference. And that's probably because they're dealing with coronavirus. I know that sounds a little bit morbid, but I wonder if the difference between this year and other years is that in this election year, adversaries and allies are also dealing with coronavirus you know like the uk probably doesn't have a lot of resources to dedicate to like dealing with this election because they're like well we're about to enter lockdown uh in one day so like you guys just have fun with your election but we're locking down again what does the bbc say um let's see here u.s election hinges on four battleground states yep that's where we're at i think the war but the reason they're saying this, I think what's more magical is that I've been numerically coming to the same conclusion, and now it's like the media is telling me what my numbers tell me. And in that sense, it doesn't feel like fake news. So BBC is not fake news. Florida is clearly not fake news. CNN, uh, what are the results again, is clearly not fake news based on what they think it's going to be. So it's like... How can you contest election where like the numbers and even the media all seem to be in agreement with what's going on? That's why this is such a really good feeling this year. So with that, I'm going to take a little bit of a break and leave it to that. But thanks to everybody, including Wacky, uh, Kahuna, Cool Jake, and uh, Dori Teen Hos for coming on in for the uh, stream today. I know it's a random one that I did a political stream. Um, but I do political streams sometimes, and this is probably my third one overall. So, hope you have a good day, and I hope the election goes well, and I guess we'll flip it back over to um, probably just where we're at, and we'll just end on that. So, I'll talk to you all later if I feel like streaming again.